نقطة من لساني فهو قولي ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذا ونار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How's everybody doing? Alhamdulillah Very good Nice to see you all um, It is uh, good to resume this, uh, the, the studies of the Quran uh, I hope that you all had a nice break when it came to uh, Eid and um, just the summer I hope has been nice uh, any any things uh, that someone has done would, anything that uh, uh, anything interesting that someone has done in the summer uh, Abdurrahman you were doing something camp maybe and I finished camp yeah. so you were at camp that's very good what else yeah we also got a new trampoline you got a new what one. we huh? got a 14 foot trampoline a trampoline mashallah Cool, mashallah. So now you can jump high. Yep. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Uh, what What have you been doing in the summer? It's interesting. Somebody you'd like to share? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> I've been making my own game. You've been making what, sorry? I've been making my own game on programming. Oh, wow. Okay, very good. You want to tell us a little bit more about that? Um, it's a 2D dungeon crawler, and I've been using Java. Wow, using Java, eh? How old are you? I am 16. Oh, you're 16, nice, Michelle. Very cool. So you're uh, you're a developer, huh? Yep. Very nice, very nice. Very cool. I used to write code in Java as well many years ago. Okay then, now let's get started inshallah. We are going to uh, resume our study of Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay, and uh, what we will do is uh, I am going to uh, show you uh, where we are in our study of the Surah. Okay, uh, and what we will do is kind of recap very quickly uh, what is going on uh, in this Surah. Uh, we were discussing uh, some of the names of the Quran, okay, and you might remember these, right? Uh, some of the names of the Quran that we discussed was firstly Al Quran, okay, uh, Al Kitab, Al Furqan, Al Dhikr. And today I like to discuss one name of the Quran to start our discussion of with, which is Al Hukm. Hmm? Al, Al what? Al Hukm, okay, Al-Hukum. very good. What does Al Hukm mean? Hmm? What does it mean? It means something that is judgment or like wise uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Okay, so you have the word uh, the 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 root letters. Hakam. Uh, like, and hakam or something. Are so so we write them out as letters, right? So the root letters are ha, ka, and me. Okay. We get from this word, from these two letters, we get the word hikmah. Yes? Hikmatun. What does hikmah mean? Uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Very good. Hikmah means wisdom. All right. Uh, we also get the word hukum. I think it's judgment. Hukum. Judgment. Excellent. Like hakim and like the court. Very good. Hakim is like the ruler. Yes. What's like yom al hakim, the day of judgment? Uh, well, Allah Subhanahu calls it yom al qiyamah, right? Oh, okay. Uh, but hukum here is uh the 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 thing that is interesting about it is that it 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 uh oh, Ashad, the Shumayla is saying I'm learning. Black flips and front flips. Well done. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see your comment. Um, the uh, the thing that's interesting is uh, the word in Arabic is saying that if you are someone who is judging, if you are uh, like a, a ruler, a judge, someone who is important, okay, that means that you must have wisdom, right? If you're a fool and you're judging pe between people, and you're an authority, people are going to be destroyed. Correct? You agree with that? Yes. Right? 
And if you're, if you're just wise, like you say nice things, but you have no power, right? Is your wisdom, does it mean anything? No. No, right? It's just nice words. So, hukm is both things together, wisdom and judgment. And that's what Allah calls the Quran. This is a book that has wisdom, but also it is the one that lays out for us how we are supposed to live our lives, right? It is like the judge in our worldly lives right now, right? Like if we have to resolve a dispute, uh, we look at what the Quran says and the Quran will uh, you know, inform us how to uh, find a resolution. So judgment, hmm? And wisdom, both of them together, that is what Allah calls the Quran, Hukman Arabiya. That's a beautiful name. And that's something that we have to understand about the Quran as we're studying it. It's not just uh, something that is uh, some nice statements and you know beautiful sounding things. No, it is full of wisdom and it needs to be implemented. It it's Arabic wisdom, wisdom, right? Yes, sorry? Arabic wisdom. Hmm. Yes, Arabic wisdom. Hukman Arabiya. That's how the Quran, Allah says in the, about the Quran. Dalika anzalnahu hukman Arabiya. Okay, very good. So that was the first uh, segment that we do, which is like uh, the names of the Quran. And this is one of the many ones. Now, you would, again, I'd like to ask you, why are there so many names of the Quran? What is, what's the point of this? Anybody remember that? I think they all mean something. They all mean something. Very good. What else uh, could it be? Like, why have so many names for something? I mean, I have one name. You have probably one name too. But why is the Quran being described with so many multiple names? Any ideas, people? Because it has more than one name. Because it has more than one what, sorry, uh, Yusuf? And one purpose. It has more than one purpose. Very good. It has multiple purposes. Excellent. I like that. You know, and the, the, the purposes, uh, you know, that that, that is the, the thing that... Um, they're highlighted by the names. I like that. Well done, Yusuf. Any other uh, thoughts? Why have multiple uh, names for the Quran? What's the wisdom in that? Hmm? So, someone want to type something or you want to say something? Please, by all means, do so. So we have, it has multiple uh, purposes. Uh, what, uh, what else would be there? I'm still thinking of something. You're still thinking of something, okay. Maybe How about... Hmm? Maybe if we just that means something. Ah, right. So, see, the Quran has uh, so many uh, so many aspects. It's not fair to describe it in just one way. It's actually unfair. It's got so many uh, layers to it. If you just said one of those layers is what the Quran is, you're not being fair to the purpose of the Quran. You're not being fair to the Quran. So that is why Allah SWT uses all these multiple names to explain to us how deep this book really is. Okay? So that's very good. Jazakumullah khairan. Alright. Let's also look at the values the Quran teaches us. Right? The, like I said, this is it's, it's meant to tell us something. We, it needs to and wants us to become uh, a better people. Hmm? So, uh, here are the values that we had seen so far. Humility. The value of humility. You have to have humbleness. Not to think, highly, not to think too, highly, too highly of yourself. Uh, to be humble and understand that you don't know everything. This is a, a mistake uh, that a person would make. Thinking that they are uh, you know, at a point where they know everything. Whereas in reality, you'd know almost nothing. Me and you and everybody else. Because there's so much to know. Uh, this is the quality of a good believer. Having humility. The opposite of that is arrogance. Arrogance. Being boastful. Being proud. Not proud as in like I'm proud of my you know, like family or my religion. But proud as in like I'm proud of who I am. And I'm better than somebody else. Like I am better than this person. That idea, you know, and that is what shaitan, like when Allah subhanahu wa talked about the shaitan, uh, Iblis, the story of Adam, that was the downfall of, uh, of, um, of Iblis 
that he was arrogant. He thought he was better than Adam. And the success of Adam, السلام, despite the fact that he made the mistakes that he made, or made the mistake, excuse me, that he made, was that he had humility. Hmm? He had humility. When Allah, when he made the mistake of eating uh, from uh, from the tree, the tree right? The tree. What is it that they said? فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Immediately he uh, received words of prayer. Immediately he had the humility to say, you know what, I was wrong. Oh Allah, I made a mistake. Uh, you know, that wasn't right of me. Hmm? Immediately he recognized that. And immediately he made amends. And this is, uh, you know, a, a very key part of uh, a good believer. Having humility, knowing that uh, sometimes uh, you have to swallow a bitter pill, right? You, you have to eat some humble pie. But that is part of what makes a good person that they can recognize that they have made mistakes. And recognizing that is a good thing. That, that's what makes a good person. Not recognizing it and saying, oh, you know what? I wasn't wrong in the first place. And I am right. And this person, who is he to tell me? That's the attitude that Iblis had. Okay. Uh, now, uh, also determined. We learned that a beautiful value that the Quran wants us to be is we have to be uh, uh, determined. Let's put uh, humility opposite of arrogance. Huh? And then think of Adam versus Iblis. Yeah? Think of that example there. Okay? Uh, uh, opposite of procrastination. Think of Bani Israel. Bani Israel and the cow. Huh? The surah is named after, uh, 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 it's called what? The surah is called what? The cow. Al Baqarah. Al Baqarah, which means the what? The cow. The cow, yeah? Okay. So, uh, the story of Al Baqarah, right? The, the, the name of the surah has like a really, like, it has a really important uh, part. It plays a really important part in like understanding. Uh, you know the the the, the it, it, it it plays a part in telling us what uh, is in like what's one of the main lessons of this surah you know and surah bakra is such a big surah has so many huge lessons yes uh, but of all the things that uh, could be uh, the surah could be named after it's named after al bakra hmm? because it is uh, referencing this uh, story. That when Moses said to his people, God commands you to sacrifice a cow. A heifer is a cow. Yeah. Uh, very nice. So that story uh, was showing the procrastination of Bani Israel. When Allah says, oh, sacrifice a cow. They were like, well, uh, are, you, are you kidding me? Musa says, of course not. A'udhu billah. Okay. They said, well, tell us what is this? What kind of cow is it? Okay, Musa says any cow that is not too old, not too young, do so, do quickly. Don't make, don't delay this thing. Okay, they're like, well, uh, what about the color? Hmm. Okay. Uh, what about? I mean, color, the age, so many things we don't really know. Please tell us exactly what type it's gonna be. You see, they're kept procrastinating, procrastinating. This is a person who is not determined. So these are people who were didn't want to do it. And the reality is they didn't want to do it. And that's why they kept putting it off. That's, uh, you know, if a person is always procrastinating, right? You're not doing uh, homework. You're not doing what it is that you have to do. Maybe your room is a mess. You haven't cleaned it in like weeks. And you keep putting it off. You keep putting it off. That probably means you don't actually want to do it. That's why you keep putting it off. And usually people say, well, oh, I, I don't have the time right now to do it. In reality... You can always make time. The real reason is just don't want to do it. Maybe because it's too difficult. Maybe it's not important enough. Whatever the case is, you just don't want to do it. And that was when Israel didn't want to do it. Did not. Opposite of. So it is, that's how they work. And of all the things that uh, the surah, uh, the name of the surah would highlight, it highlights this part. Don't be like these people 
who didn't want to do what uh, Allah tell, told them to do, kept delaying it until it became too difficult. فَذَبَحُوهَا They sacrificed it. They actually did it at the end. But though they would rather not have done it, that's the reality. And this is a, uh, what Allah wants us not to be like. Now this is not just a slight on like a, ethnic, uh, a group of uh, people of a certain ethnicity. The Quran is here to teach us lessons. Okay? And this is one of the lessons the Quran is teaching us. These are people who are living with one of the greatest prophets of all time. They're not just living like somewhere you know, remotely or whatnot. They're living with Musa alayhi salam who is the man who did miracle after miracles. Allah performed miracle after miracle on his hand. He is the one who freed them from generations of slavery, from humiliation, from massacre. He is the man who did this. Yet when he's with you, you don't even have like, uh, like the determination to do what he is telling you as a prophet of Allah. That is a major thing, right? That is the lesson for us. Uh, it's not to point a finger at them and say, Aha, that's not the thing. It is, in fact, to learn a lesson from their mistakes. That is what the Quran is trying to teach us. Be determined. Uh, you know, and the example there is the Bani Israel and the cow. Okay. Now, also, the, another uh, quality that the Quran wants us to be like, or wants us to espouse, is Ihsan. Ihsan, yeah? Ihsan is translated as excellence. Okay? In some <laughs> Very nice, Abdul Rahman, right? It's to worship Allah. Translate that from Abdul Rahman. To worship Allah like you see Him, but if you don't see Him, He sees you. Excellent. Ahsan, Ahsan. Well done. Now, Ihsan, tell me what are the root letters of the word Ihsan? Can you tell me from the Arabic? Ahsan. Uh, okay, the, the root letters are three, guys. So try it. What is it going to be? Of, the th of these letters, what is the three uh, that, that you think is the root? Ha, seen, seen, and uh, noon. Ha, seen, and noon. Very good. Okay. So, ha, seen, and noon. From that, you get a word that means like the, the word is husn. What does husn mean? Husn means excellence. Uh, husn actually means beauty. Hmm? Oh, it means okay. beautiful. For example, uh, like the Prophet would make a dua, Allahumma kama hassanta khalqi. When he would put on clothes, this is a dua we're supposed to make. That, oh Allah, uh, in fact, I'll display this dua for you. Dua for uh, putting on clothes. Look at that. See? Look at that. First Google result. What does it say? Uh, that's not the one. New garment, sorry. Uh, that's not the one either. Okay, hold on. Uh, ho, 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 ho. Okay, so here's the dua. All right, something you like about your physical characteristics, okay? Allahumma kama hassanta khalqi fahassin khuluqi. Very beautiful dua. Huh? Allahumma kama hassanta khalqi fahassin khuluqi. Oh Allah, just as you had perfected my creation, perfect my moral character. Okay, and look at this. Hassanta, made it beautiful. Oh Allah, just like how you made my, uh, my, my appearance beautiful, um, hmm, make my um, character also beautiful. All right. So uh, it comes from the word husn, which means to be beautiful. Hmm? Excellence is doing something in a manner that is beautiful. That is what uh, ihsan is. It is doing something in a, in a, in a way uh, that is uh, it beautiful. Uh, and when we think of ihsan, we think of Ibrahim alayhi yep. salam. That's who we think of. Like the best of the best. The best of the best, right? In a beautiful man okay and then we think of ibrahim that's actually the end of the juz huh that's at the end of this this first juz when allah SWT speaks about ibrahim alayhi salam and he uh says about ibrahim alayhi salam uh 
that I will make you a leader of mankind. Hmm? But before Allah says you, you'll be a leader of mankind, what did he do to earn this incredible honor? Uh, well, what he did to earn this amazing honor was because he was tested by Allah. He was tested. And when he fulfilled the tests, that is when Allah said, Inni ja'aluka lil nasi imama. Okay? So it's a... It's a Sorry, what happened, Abdul Rahman? I thought it was Khalifa, not um, the other word. So the word Khalifa was used for who? Abdul Rahman is asking a good question. Who was it that Allah said, I will make you a Khalifa? Um, I think it was Muhammad. Mm, Muhammad, okay, maybe. Let's see, somebody else might know. I'm not sure. Hint, he was the first human being. Adam. Adam, alayhi salam, very good, right? So Adam alayhi salam was the one that Allah said, I'm going to, uh, you know, he's going to be a ambassador of Allah on earth. But Allah said about Ibrahim that he will be the ja'iluka linnasi imama. You will be the leader of mankind. Huh? Uh, so that's a beautiful thing. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, about Ibrahim that he is the one who is the example of excellence. And when we as Muslims practice Islam, we are trying to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet followed the sunnah of Ibrahim ﷺ. And sorry, what? But the Prophet followed the sunnah of Ibrahim ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ was the one who you think of like he brought the sunnah of Ibrahim back to life. Yeah. Okay? That was who the Prophet ﷺ was. The sunnah of Ibrahim ﷺ, the way of Ibrahim, he brought it back to life. Oh. And we are the ones who are following the Prophet's footsteps in fulfilling that vision, right? Allah SWT calls the sunnah of Ibrahim, actually he says, uh, he calls it Millata Ibrahim. Millata Ibrahim. That is actually what he calls it. Uh, the religion of Abraham. The way of Abraham. So, uh, religion of Abraham is uh, the Millah of Ibrahim. That is what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about um, about this. Now, what's interesting is that is what excellence is. And we are supposed to be uh, espousing that wallahu a'lam. Okay? Sorry, give me a sec. All right, sorry about that. Now, the uh, so now let's get let this is the things that we studied. Let's go to the segment three, which is the tafsir of Al Baqarah. Okay, and we had uh, looked at uh, the theme, the main theme of Surah Baqarah is submission to Allah without compromise. This is like the thing, this is the main thing that Allah wants us to learn from Surah Al Baqarah. Uh, this is uh, something, you know, it's a, uh, there's many things to be learned from Surah Al-Baqarah, but this is one of the main things, okay? Uh, that it is uh, the um, uh, submission to Allah without compromise, with excellence, wanting to do it, being determined, uh, with humility, all those characteristics, okay? Now, what we were looking at was, we had looked at the beginning of the surah where Allah spoke about Adam, we looked at, uh, you know, Bani Israel and their mistakes. Uh, we looked at Ibrahim alayhi salam. But then finally Allah turns to us as believers. The responsibilities that we have as Muslims. Okay. Uh, what expectations does Allah have of us as Muslims? That is the next thing uh, that, uh, that is um, discussed. Okay. And that is, let's go to that ayah right here. Uh, the, the expectations that Allah has of us, um, He wants us to, you know, like the, our expectations are reasonable, right? Uh, we should, uh, you know, like we're not, we sh the religion is not so hard that it's impossible to follow. Allah has made it reasonable to follow. Allah speaks about people who made mistakes, like Adam alayhi salam, who made a mistake, Bani Israel made many mistakes, and they're we're supposed to learn from their mistakes. Then he speaks about the one who's like, you know, as perfect as humanly you can get Ibrahim alayhi salam and Prophet salam. And as we learn from their example, we're not expected to be like them. 
because that's a very difficult standard to meet. But we're expected to uh, aspire to be like them. Okay, we're expected to learn from the mistakes of those before us and try to be like the ones who we love, like uh, Ibrahim and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? and all the other prophets as well. This is what uh, the middle ground means. We're expected to be, uh, you know, uh, submitting to Allah without compromise, while you know mistakes will happen, and that's no problem. All right. Now, we spoke about uh, the, you know, we are told that we are the ones who are the uh, the recipients of the final revelation, the final prophet, the final qibla. Hmm? Now, this is a big honor. This is not like a small thing. We're not just any other people. We're expected to be people who have a lot of, uh, like we're carriers of Allah's message in the world. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be. Carriers of his message. Yeah. So, uh, what is it? What, what is his expectations of us? Hmm? His expectation is that we are going to be patient when something bad happens. Okay? When something bad happens, we say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We spoke about this before quite a bit, so I'm going to quickly um, just recap this. Yeah, That when uh, you know, tragedy afflicts us, uh, calamity comes about, something bad happens, something disastrous happens, something that you didn't want to happen, something you can't control, that is when true guidance, a person who really understands what it means to believe in Allah and practice that faith, what their reaction is that they don't say something that's inappropriate, they don't say something irrational, they don't say something emotional, they say something that puts them in a state of calmness. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. They just express patience in actions and in words. Okay? And then, you see what Allah says about them is that these are the people who, it is they who are on the right path. You know? If you want to know if you're on the right path or not, this is how you tell if you're on the right path. If something bad happens, are you able to be patient? Are you able to take this as part of Allah's plan? Are you able to understand that life is good and bad and Allah is testing us with both good and bad? Our life is a test when Allah gives us good. It's a test to see, are we going to be grateful? Will we forget about the, uh, the blessings or, uh, or will we be thankful for the blessings? Our life is a test when Allah puts us in a tough spot. It is a test to see, can you trust Allah's plan? Will you be patient enough to know that Allah has a larger plan for you? Hmm? Will you be patient enough to recognize that uh, this bad, as bad as it seems right now, may have a positive outcome for you down the future, down in the future? Hmm? Do you know how a person becomes uh, stronger? Like uh, if you're trying to get stronger, you're working out. How do you become stronger and bigger? Hmm? How do you do that? Hmm? How do you become stronger and bigger? Working out. We're eating. Well, eating, working out. Well, so when you work out, what happens? You're lifting weights. Your muscles swell. Muscles swell. In fact, what happens is your mu muscles, they and tear up. apart. Did you know that? The fibers in your mm -hmm. muscles, they tear apart. And then they rejoin and then when they rejoin they're bigger hmm? that is how uh, growth happens and one of the things that you know when, when someone is trying to get stronger and better if you are always doing the same thing if I take you know like a 10 pound dumbbell and I'm always just doing like bicep curls even the bicep curls don't do anything <laughs> but if all I'm doing is 10 pound uh, bicep curls eventually my muscles will get used to it and nothing will happen. No muscle fibers will tear. No growth will happen. You know what I have to do then? I have to do something different. I have to do like a different style of uh, activity. The point of this example is this. Growth physically happens with pain. You have to put your muscles in pain. You have, literally have to tear them apart and then they grow bigger. 
That is the only way to grow physically. Hmm? This is our biology. This is not like some uh, theory. This is how we are as human beings. If that's the case for our growth physically, what do you think about our growth as uh, our, our as people, as as a person? Like your growth as a uh, not just uh, spiritually, but as also uh, your personality becoming better, acquiring more wisdom. Yeah, all of those things only happen through pain, just like physical growth only happens through pain. So when Allah says. That we are going to test you. Hmm? We are going to test you with fear and hunger and loss of property, lives and crops. Right? That pain is not meant to be a punishment. That pain is to test you. So like in a bad that's what Allah said. Exactly. So after every bad, bad thing, after something disastrous, something good always happens. After something bad, something like good happens. COVID-19. Mm. But also keep in mind the pain that Allah is, you know, putting us through. It's there to help us grow. Just like the physical pain, pain helps you grow physically. This kind of experiences helps you grow as a person. Mm? Develop character. Develop, you know, wisdom. Grow spiritually. Give good news to those who endure with fortitude. This is very, very critical. Okay, so we have to understand this. Allah tells us good and bad is part of Allah's plan. If bad things happen, don't just give up hope on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? This is not uh, like you don't, don't think that something bad happens all of a sudden. Allah has abandoned you. He doesn't care for you. Why is God like this? No, it's part of his plan. He gives you lots of good. We thank him for that. He gives us, uh, he gets a, gives us tests and we are patient and we see those tests as a way to grow and become better and stronger. Okay. Uh, um, excuse me, sir. Um, yeah. uh, what exactly are we covering uh, today? We're covering the tafsir of Surah Baqarah. Uh, wait, we were, this is something we've been doing for a while now. So we're, I'm just recapping. Yeah, like what ayah? Uh, ayah <clears throat> the ayah number is 155. So this is the ayah number right here. Huh? You see that? No, from what to what? Uh, it's... Just, just watch. You'll see. Okay. All right. Now, uh, one. Uh, so that's one thing that we're expected to do. We're expected to reflect on the world around us. Ayah number one sixty four. Hmm? Reflection on the world around us. This is beautiful. This is uh, something that we all should do. You should uh, take the time to look at what is around you. Okay. Uh, not just like on your on your phone or a video, but actually the world. <laughs> Go outdoors and look at the amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? It says, look, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day, in the ships that sail in the ocean, bearing cargoes, beneficial to mankind. You see, uh, this is the way all trade and commerce happens. Without this, no trade, no commerce, no uh, luxuries in life. Everything goes out the window. It's literally all predicated on the ships that sail in the ocean. Hmm? Uh, and that's what I was reminding us. This buoyancy is a blessing of Allah. Buoyancy is what allows a ship to, to sail. Uh, in the water which God sends down from the sky and with which he revives the earth after it's dead. Scattering over it all kinds of animals. This is the water cycle. Uh, the courses of the winds, this is the weather, hmm? and the clouds pressed into service between earth and the sky. This is uh, our rain. Without rain, there is a drought. In drought, there is no food or water. There are indeed signs for people who use their reason. All of these things that are around us, starting from something as small as the rain, right? observing rain, to something as big as observing the creation of the heavens and the earth, the study of the stars, the study of how uh, life on earth began, the study of geology, everything. Indeed, there are signs for people who use their reasons. Faith is based on ayat inside the book. That is the Quran. It's also based on ayat outside the book. And that is the glorious creation of Allah. Reflection on what Allah has made. You look at that. You look at uh, the stars. 
you look at the unbelievable amount of galaxies that almost you can't not almost you can't even count how many there are there and the measure of how large the universe is we still actually don't know how big it is it humbles you to understand who like what our place is in this world and it should give us the majesty of understanding that the one who brought this all into existence is so powerful and so dominant. Hmm? You go down to the molecular level and that's like a universe in itself. That's like a universe of itself. What's happening at the molecular level and all of these things. I mean, for a person to claim this incredible system with such intricacy, such complexity arose as an accident arose without cause arose uh, as a uh, as a as a byproduct of just like a random incident that is that's nonsense you know for a finite creation to be in place the one who starts it has to be infinite by default for a limited uh, creation to exist the eternal has to have has to you know precede it to bring it into into existence this is the first principles of logic hmm? that is what we're supposed to do reflect on the world around us and when you reflect on the world around us based on what is around us it gives us more strength in our faith this is very beautiful uh, we're supposed to enjoy the good things in life this is you know not everything good is haram this is something that some people think so eat the wholesome things of which we have provided for you and the good that we enjoy we should give thanks to Allah for hmm? uh, haram is a uh, little halal is a lot enjoy the halal but when you enjoy the halal uh, be thankful hmm? that is an, uh, the way we uh, that, that is what our religion teaches us ha enjoy the good things in life but at the end of your enjoyment be thankful to Allah for providing you with that good stuff okay uh, the Quran speak. The, the the next things that the uh, the things that we are taught about is uh, uh, the ayah of virtue. We spoke about that last time quite a bit, so I'm just gonna just recap this idea. Uh, ayatul bir or the ayah of virtue. What is it? What is it that that's virtuous? Hmm? Uh, Brother Amir is saying online that he ends by mentioning those who believe, who reflect. Uh, mashallah, and these characteristics are characteristics that embed in our nature to be successful. Very good, Ahsan. Well, good point, brother Amir. Uh, so, uh, the virtue. What does it mean to be a good person? What does it mean to be a uh, uh, you know an, an, an exemplary person? This ayah explains. Hmm? Virtue is not just turning east or west. Islam is not just a bunch of rituals. Okay, I had a friend who was a convert. From, I think Buddhism and I asked him once I was like uh, what is what was your like what you guys do as Buddhists he's like oh we had like okay you know put your feet here and you know uh, touch this so table before you do this uh, and just a bunch of like steps of what life was that's all their religion was and I was I was thinking for many of us that's all Islam is as well you know don't put your feet towards the Kaaba you know don't do this uh, eat this kind of chicken don't eat that kind of chicken uh, that's not all that Islam is about. That's not what all virtue is. It's not just turning your face towards the east or the west. It's not just rituals. It's not just, okay, five things to do in life. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. Now again, one, two, three, four, five. It's not just that. The rituals are there, of course. But there is a reason, a hot, much bigger reason for those rituals. A much more... Um, uh, all encompassing, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, a, a much more all encompassing um, uh, understanding that the rituals tie back into. Okay, that is our iman, believing in God, the last day, believing in Allah is, uh, you know, looking at the universe and recognizing that this is a product of an ultimate, eternal independent creator it is not anything else it's logically impossible for it to be anything else but that god himself how do we find out about that god that god is someone who is in the unseen 
We found out about him through his revelations, the revelations that he said over time, books and prophets, not just Islam. The Prophet was not the first of the prophets. He was the last of the prophets. Okay. All revelation before Allah sends it. And we find out about uh, his uh, will through these, uh, th this revelation. Uh, all leading up to the last day, the day of accountability. That is the mindset that, you know, uh, that, that, that's the mindset of uh, people of virtue. Right? See, everything is leading up to the day of judgment. Um, it's expressed by uh, being able to give away the thing that you love the most. Your wealth, the thing that's dearest to you, the ability to give that to someone else who needs it. That shows you understand life is more than just me feeling good about myself and me enjoying myself. The person can do that. You see, that is virtue to be able to give something you love and enjoy to someone who needs it more than you, because you understand now that is a, you know, uh, the, the bigger purpose of life is to please Allah by helping those around us. And it's not just to please myself and feel good about myself. No, that's not what it is. Huh? And then, it is to, as you can see, to, to relatives, to orphans, to the very poor. Relatives are first on the list because we have to take care of our family. You see? Uh, orphans, the poor. Travelers are the ones who back in the day would get stranded in the middle of nowhere and would have money at home, but no money at the time that they're there. So helping those people who need temporarily or permanently. Hmm? Setting saves, uh, set it, the set slaves free. Islam was the first religion that made the concept of setting a slave free, okay? Because it's a good thing to do. There's no financial benefit. It's purely a virtuous act. It's purely making someone's life better. This is the first religion that preached this uh, in, in, um, in the history of, 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 of religions, okay? What's interesting is, uh, this is a very, very selfless act, a very difficult thing to do. Uh, it's like buying a house and then giving the house away for free for someone to live in. That's what setting a slave free, that's the cost of it, you see? But that is virtue because you're now basically giving somebody a new lease on life. Uh, attending prayers and pay, paying the alms, zakat, spirituality and helping others, Get, keeping your word. You know, your word is your bond. You should, when you say something, it should mean something, right? Uh, it shouldn't just say whatever just to get out of a tight situation. If you give your word, you keep your word. Hmm? Being patient in hard times, in times of distress, that is true iman. That is what Islam means. That's the kind of person Allah wants us to be. People of virtue. Hmm? Such are the people who are God-fearing. Okay, uh, Allah speaks about uh, fasting. What is expected of us, right? Again, we're talking about what is expected of us as people who are the carriers of uh, of uh, the, the the Prophet uh, his legacy, the inheritors of the way of Abraham. What is expected of us to fast spiritually? This is a spiritual uh, enlightenment for us. You know, fasting is something, it frees you, believe it or not. It frees you from the shackles of, uh, you know, just material consumption. That's what's supposed to teach us, that you don't depend on these things. You can depend, like you, you can do this, break away from even the most basic necessities of life for a few hours to show yourself that you can change, to show yourself that you're ultimate source of nourishment and trust is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what fasting is supposed to be. And it's not a new thing. Uh, Allah prescribed it to all prophets before. Hmm? All prophets before uh, were prescribed this fasting. The difference, of course, is uh, people who passed before us, the prophets who lived before us, their message was for the people of their time, for the communities, the ethnicities that they were sent to. The message of the Prophet is for all of humanity. This is the key difference, okay? And this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references right here. You see, uh, 
he says this that all people surrender yourselves totally to God. Hmm? Do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Surely he is your sworn enemy. Okay? This idea, the like the 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 Prophet uh, has brought this message uh, to us. For all of humanity. Okay? That is what's different about the Prophet ﷺ compared to the rest of the other prophets. The other prophets preach fasting, they preached virtue, they preached prayer, but their job was to preach it to a specific group of people. When the Prophet ﷺ is doing it, he is the last of these prophets. He is doing it for all of humanity. And the job of the Prophet now falls to the rest of us. It falls to the rest of us. We have to first live these, ver these values. Be people of virtue and then share these virtues with the people. That this is the final religion. This is the final prophet. This is the final qibla. And we are going to be the ones who share it with the people all around us. Hmm? Uh, what does Allah expect of us? Uh, he speaks about something, a little bit of a history here. Siskana nasu ummata wahida. Mankind was once a single community. I.e., they were all worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we believe. That humanity all started on tawheed, on worshipping Allah alone. But then people developed differences. Okay? Anybody here know what anthropology is? Anybody heard of what anthropology is? No, I didn't. Okay. I know I didn't. Anthropology? Okay, anthropology is a subject that studies how uh, you know civilizations lived, how uh, you know civilizations basically came about. It's not a, it's not an exact science. It's a it's a it's a and it's a a lot of it is theories and and a lot of it is um, like it, it's hypotheses, right? Like it's it's a it's a claim, and it's the evidence isn't uh, like scientific evidence, for example. Okay. The evidence is uh, anecdotal evidence and whatnot. Okay, so anthropology, the main theory of anthropology is humans were all sorts of like, you know, humans were naked. They were cavemen, ancient civilizations, well done, Said uh, They were cavemen, they would worship different, different gods, multiple gods. And then, you know, through uh, over the course of history, you have these uh, pockets of, people where, uh, you know, they would preach worshiping one God alone. Okay. That's what the theory of, uh, uh, that's the, pre the, the prevailing theory in anthropology. And again, I'm summarizing and being very generic here. Whereas what we know from the Quran is in fact the opposite. Adam al -Islam was the first human being and he worshiped Allah subhanahu wa alone. And all of his progeny, his kids, grandkids were one uh, in their worship of Allah, okay, but then they develop differences. But like um, his uh, his other son, I forgot his name. The guy who killed his other son, the 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 brother that killed the other brother. I know, I know. With the the, the ha Habil and Qabil, right? The, there was one who yeah. killed the other, but uh, that's what the ayah is referencing. The people develop differences, right? Uh, yeah. So then Allah sent prophets. Oh. As bearers of good news and warning, i.e., to resolve their difference, bearers of good news that okay, let's do this, and Allah has a reward for you, incentive and warning. If you don't do it, Allah has a punishment. Okay, that idea that's what the Prophet's job was, and uh, to strengthen and support the claims of the Prophet, Allah sent with them uh, the book containing the truth. Here is a uh, authoritative piece of evidence. Okay. So that people may judge between their disputes. But then what happened is this. This is the unfortunate reality. It was only those to whom the scripture was given who disagreed about it after clear science had come to them because of rivalry between them. The sad thing is the people, the, uh, the ones who learned the scripture from the prophets, the ones who were supposed to do the job of the prophets ended up fighting themselves ended up being the ones who caused disagreement, who caused disunity, 
and division. They became the reason for disunity. Whereas Allah has sent the revelation so that the disunity would be resolved. This is unfortunately the reality. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping it real here. He sent the prophets and the messengers and revelation with a purpose. The people failed the purpose. The people who are supposed to uh, uphold that purpose, they failed it. But despite, despite people's failures, God by his will guided the believers to the truth about which others had disputed. Despite the failures of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still enables those looking for the truth to find the truth, to be better. And because he guides whom he wants to the straight path. You see that? This is a very, very important concept. We are, you look around the world and you say, oh, there's so many problems. How come there's so many problems? Why didn't God do this? Why didn't God do that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the answer to that is two parts. Part number one, this life is supposed to be a test of people. People who were given a responsibility uh, and people who, like uh, an individual responsibility and a community responsibility. Those who failed on an individual level, they will be held accountable by Allah on an individual level. Those who failed on a community level, they will be held with, to even more scrutiny. But the world, the way it works, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not interfere in the way, uh, like he does not uh, stop an individual or a group of individuals, uh, you know, supernaturally. He allows it to play out uh, a natural course of actions because that's the reality of the world. It is meant to be a place where good and evil clash, a place where there's a struggle between uh, you know, two parties. That is how the world is. That is the reality of it. But despite all of the struggles, despite all of the ups and downs, this is the thing. Allah, by His will, guides the believers to the truth. Undisputable. Always there. Because He guides who He wants to a straight path. This is critical. When you look around the world and you see chaos, but you also see order within that chaos. You also see uh, people who Allah has chosen. Among all of the ups and downs, all the bad things that's happening, there's good uh, by the permission of God. Hmm? And this is the reality of life. And this is what Allah says. Do you think that you will enter paradise? Ayah number 214. Uh, without having suffered like those who have passed before you. This is how paradise is earned. And this is something we want to understand. That, uh, you know, paradise is, is, is uh, attained uh, by, uh, by, by going through difficult, by going through the difficulties of life. Huh? I number 214. Okay. Uh, it is something that happens. It happened to the prophets before hmm? and believers with the prophets. Uh, it is something that's a reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, be ready for it. When you see it, don't say, why is it happening? Don't say that. Try on the other hand to say, how can I get through this on a personal level? How can I help my community get through it on a communal level? What can I do to make it better? Because Allah inna nasrallahi qareeb, surely the help of God is near. Okay, with that, inshallah, we'll end. Uh, inshallah, next week we will conclude, inshallah, Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay? Because uh, this was, we did a large recap of what we had done. We had a lo lo long break of uh, what had happened. But uh, the surah really now is talking about what is Allah's expectations of us. And there's a few more things that we'll add to this list. And then we'll conclude Surah Al-Baqarah, inshallah ta'ala, next week. Jazakumullah khair, everybody, for coming out. I really appreciate it. I'll see you all next week, same time, same place, inshallah. Okay? Take care. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah wa alhamdulillah. Allah shadu la ilaha illa anta nastafiqa tubulaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.